वेलकम टू माई YouTube चैनल सेफ्टी गाइडलाइंस माई नेम इज़ फ़हीम आजम एंड आई शैल बी शेयरिंग अबाउट बेसिक टिप्स ऑन कंस्ट्रक्शन सेफ्टी द टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स आर वाट इज़ सेफ्टी सेफ्टी ओरिएंटेशन टी बी टी टूल बॉक्स टॉक पी टी डब्ल्यू परमिट टू वर्क स्लिप ट्रिप एंड फॉल हाउस कीपिंग पी पी ई पर्सनल प्रोटेक्टिव इक्वमेंट्स हेजर्ड्स एंड इट्स कंट्रोल मईर्स रिस्क फर्स्ट ऑफ आल वी विल डिस्कस वाट इज सेफ्टी देर आर मैनी डेफिनेशन ऑन गूगल एंड अदर सर्च इंजनस बट अकॉर्डिंग टू मी ए बी सी इज द बेस्ट वन इन थ्री सिंपल वर्ड्स always be careful it is quite simple and understandable there are two types of safety responses reactive and proactive first i will discuss reactive response you are not covering any safety precautions but when something happens and then you take the safety measures for example if there is a fire in the camp kitchen as fire was extinguished fire blanket and fire extinguishers were posted this is known as reactive safety response and the other response is called proactive nothing happened and safety measures are taken in advance to be ready for any incident for example fire extinguisher and fire blankets were already placed in the camp kitchen this is known as proactive safety response now we will discuss safety orientation it is sort of an awareness of the area or place where you will spend time live or work for example guest at your place we show him the living room guest room and other locations of our place another example when we stay in hotel we get the orientation on staircase and other facilities same is required for construction site if you have to work there you have to get safety orientation prior to stay or work on the site you must know at least three basic tips and those are what are the potential hazards what kind of ppe you have to wear and in case of an emergency what you will have to do at least know the escape route toolbox stock which stands which is the abbreviation of tbt always discuss the activity on site and its related hazards with the area supervisor this talk must be conducted prior to start any activity if you have any doubts please raise your hand and ask your supervisor don't be hesitant once tbt is finished whole crew must sign in the sheet the area safety officer should maintain and keep the record of attendance sheet remember safety is our first priority family and friends are very important to us by driving living working or playing in a safe environment we can lead a happy life with our family and friends PTW stands for permit to work permit to work is a document issued by the proponent to authorize to work on site there are different types of work permits some organization have four permits while other have up to six or seven permits but here we will only discuss four permits hot permit where activity has an ignition source cold permit no machine is being used 
another example is painting with brush confined space entry permit for example excavation deeper than 4 feet or working inside tank or vessels fourth permit is called line break release if you have to replace the wall of any existing line opening oil or gas lines why permit is needed proponent knows the activity to control its hazards number of workers and their training and certification type of equipments tool being used who can issue the permit proponent can issue the permit and that representative is called certified work permit issuer who can receive the permit the certified work permit receiver from the contractor side can receive the permit now we will discuss on slip trip and fall when you start the activity on the site there are three main hazards namely slip trip and fall if there is water oil or grease on the ground of construction site then any person can slip the next point is trip if there is no proper housekeeping housekeeping will be discussed later or if there are cables or housing materials or scaffold tubes in your way at the construction site then any person can trip and the last one is fall for example a damaged ladder an incomplete elevated platform no barricades on deep excavations are working at height someone can fall so we have to eliminate these things from the construction site housekeeping so as i mentioned in the previous slide now i will explain about housekeeping in detail housekeeping at workplace can be defined as activities undertaken to create or maintain an orderly clean tidy and safe working environment effective housekeeping can eliminate many workplace hazards and help get work done safely and properly housekeeping is very important factor in site safety ppe personal protective equipment items five basic ppe items are safety glasses hard hat ear plugs hand gloves and safety shoes ppe is required as per the activity for example someone is using shower to excavate he needs normal safety glasses on the other hand if worker is grinding a pipe he needs safety goggles and face mask for welding activity welder has to wear an appropriate shield make sure we must use the proper ppe as per the activity there are some images of ppe items for example pair of safety glasses here you can see the yellow hard hat which is a normal hard hat and red one is called full brim hard hat these are ear protections maximum permissible level for noise is 85 decibel one has to wear ear plugs when noise crosses the limit ear muff is used for higher noise level better protect your ears do remember hearing loss is quite progressive there are different types of safety gloves so depending on the activity consult your safety or site supervisor and he will guide which kind of gloves are appropriate to be used for which specific activity safety shoes what is the difference between normal shoes and safety shoes safety shoes have hard sole and it has metallic or fiber toe so it will protect your fingers
Now we will discuss hazards and its control measures. Hazard can be defined as any object, situation or behavior that has the potential to cause injury, ill health or damage to property or the environment. Types and examples of hazards, firstly physical hazards that include excavations, secondly mechanical hazards include heavy equipments, thirdly chemical hazards for example petrol, diesel, paint and last but not the least biological hazards which include used syringes and used tissues. Control measures. It includes actions that reduce risk from hazard exposure by removing the hazard or reducing exposure to it. Various types of hazard, hazard controls. It is also known as the hierarchy of hazard controls. The best hazard control is elimination. Elimination means to physically remove the hazard. The next option is substitution. Substitution means to replace the hazard. The third option is engineering control, which means to isolate people from the hazard. Fourthly, administrative control, which means to change the way people work and the least preferred option to control hazard is PPE, which means to protect the workers. What is risk? Risk is the chance or probability that a person will be harmed or experience an adverse health effect if exposed to a hazard. It may also apply to situations with property or equipment loss or harmful effects on the environment. Now we will discuss the factors that influence the degree or likelihood of risk. The first one is the nature of the exposure. How much a person is exposed to a hazardous thing or condition, for example, several times a day or once a year. Second factor is how the person is exposed, for example, breathing in a vapor, skin contact. And the third factor is the severity of the effect. For example, one substance may cause skin cancer while another may cause skin irritation. Cancer is a much more serious effect than irritation. Thank you for watching my video. If you like my video, please kindly click the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive notifications regarding the further videos that I shall upload on my channel. See you in the next video. Till then, have a good time. Bye.